Well, all right, everyone, welcome to episode 15 of the Gundam Explained podcast. I am your host, Adam Blue, where every week I talk about Gundam, because what better is there to do? Uh, I mean, there's important stuff to do, but hey, Gundam's awesome, right? So we talk about that. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for joining. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube if you haven't. Also, of course, the giveaway. I talk about that all the time. There's some items I am giving away. Uh, there's a link to the video uh, in the description uh, below to uh, get more information on that. But moving forward, uh, to get started, let's see. Uh, wanted to talk about uh, some of my previous videos real quick. I did the review for the episode Gundam Jack of 0083. That was a lot of fun. In in looking at it, it it's interesting when I'm making these videos and I'm thinking about the critiquing in a way that I'm doing or more of the deep dive. I, I think about them as I'm doing them and it gives me more appreciation. And I really got to say 0083 is, is really good. Uh, even though I've already watched it multiple times since I first got into Gundam, Watching it for the purpose of breaking it down, talking about certain elements that I found, well, it's a lot more enjoyable. And I can see myself going back even to video, like I would love to see in a few years I go back and redo Unicorn again. Uh, not just rewatch it, but to do m more updated videos because with the expanding knowledge that I have of Gundam, uh, it would be really cool to touch on little things. And, you know, in speaking of reviewing some of these shows, you know, I've been sticking strictly with UC Gundam, and that is going to be the primary uh, Gundam I cover here, but I get requests for others. I am interested in watching others, and I'm sure as I've, I've nearly watched everything you see, I'm, just, I'm trying to find those small little tidbits here and there that uh, are like small little animations that are not too long. But there's going to be other Gundam properties to get into, especially if by the time this uh, Gundam movie on Netflix comes out, it ends up being non-UC anyway. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to even further get into non-UC stuff. Uh, for instance, uh, the Gundam After War X has been brought up a number of times. And I even watched some little prologue-y thing that I saw on YouTube. This was like today during work, so I wasn't like fully paying attention. It was kind of on in the background. But from what I saw, it was pretty interesting. It seemed like it was it, it was set up almost like the original Gundam, just like different things going on, different mobile suit designs. It, part of me is thinking, is this really just a way to go crazy with mobile suit designs so they can sell other stuff? But if the story's there and the music's there... It's, it's probably pretty cool, so I might dive into more of that. But also, I had the new Gundam review go up. That's of the Robot Spirits version. And I even do a quick little comparison of the uh, real grade in there. An excellent figure. Could use an update, but still good. And the price you can get for it on eBay, I think, is is, is worth it. Um, okay, then. Yeah, I just wanted to talk about my videos uh, that have come up lately. In terms of purchases I've made of Gundam, I haven't actually got anything recently Gundam related. I know um, one thing I'm going to be talking about, and maybe this is a perfect time to get back into that, is the uh, Super Robot Wars 30. So while not strictly a Gundam game, it incorporates a lot of Gundam, and some of the main stuff is Gundam. So for those unfamiliar, Super Robot Wars and 30, which is an indicator that it's been around for 30 years. I think it started on the NES, a tactical-based game similar to Shining Force or Fire Emblem, almost like the SD Generations I, I've just gotten into and playing. It, it It's just like that. It just has all these different robot properties from Japan, so I'm going to learn a lot playing the game. So real quick, I, I was playing SD Generations Genesis, and I still am, and it is actually really fun. It's just really hard. And it could be just I'm not familiar with that series, even though like I, I have history with, with Shining Force. Although I would say the Super Robot Wars 30 is more like Fire Emblem. There's a difference between the two games. It seems with SD Generation Genesis is really just about uh, um, larger scale, longer battles, I guess, where there's a lot involved, many different mobile suits. 
when I'm playing the Super Robot Wars, I get more of a Fire Emblem vibe out of it, where so far they seem to be smaller scale battles, but each individual uh, mech or character, uh, there's a lot to them. There's a lot to the actions, um, buffs from other characters, supporting upgrades, and I really liked what I've played. I played the first level or the first area you can choose between something where it looks like it's on, uh, on Earth on a that the building and then a colony space colony i'm like oh hey that looks like gundam i'm gonna do that and so yeah luckily i got to play as uh uo oh wait uso Ewan ellen ah why am i forgetting his name uso 13 year old from victory gundam you get you get to use the victory gundam it has the other characters too you, victory gundam was something i really got into when i first got into gundam and i will be doing a review of that show but it is really cool to go back to these characters that I haven't really uh, thought about in a while. Uh, but with Super Robot Wars, I've got to say the graphics are on point. I, playing it on my computer is great. It was like when I was playing Crossrays to check out if I wanted to play a game like that. And I love using a mouse. You can almost play one-handed between the left and right click. So I, it's kind of easy to multitask or if you don't feel like really diving into a game where you really have to have your uh, hand-eye coordination in check you can sort of sit back enjoy the animation the i love how it looks like you know the hand-drawn animations they're not 3d polygons and it just looks great it, it's reminiscent of the old school games um and again even though it has it, it's not even a full sd look it seems like it's less sd but still deformed in some way but I think it's worth it. You can get it on Steam, Switch, and uh, PlayStation, so that's PS4 or PS5, and it is a heck of a lot of fun so far. Yeah, just thinking about playing it makes me want to play it, because at the same time, uh, Age of Empires 4 just came out, and I love playing real-time strategy games, even though the Super Robot Wars and the SD Generation games are turn-based. I really like real-time. I was playing a little of Age of Empires 4, um, and I loved that. Um, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I'm curious if anyone else is playing Super Robot Wars 30. I think I'm going to do a video about that, maybe like a quick overview or impressions of it. And then I think I want to do a video where I'm like talking about the Gundam, uh, characters that are used in it. I, I really wanted to show off the graphics too. And also, I think this is a big deal because it's... Potentially the first time uh, a game in the series was released day and date worldwide and on Steam of all places. So a Western audience can really get a hand on it. And it, very interesting, too, because when I went to go get it, it had already been out for a few hours at that point, And there was already around 40 plus reviews. Most of them were positive. Um, I haven't checked out the reviews yet, but definitely a fun time. So um Speaking of video game news, let me get my mouse over here. So, really cool updates with Gundam Battle Operation. So, they have this Halloween thing going on. The same thing they kind of did last year where there's like these little tasks you can do in the overworld. The overworld's really where there's the hangar, the supply area where you go sortie and there's simulations. But they have a little game where you can go and um, take pictures of this uh, camp fairy. It's it's just like a little stamp um, or a spray, if you will, that's hidden around. There's 18 of them, uh, and that was fun. Me and my son did that. We kind of ran around the map kind of looking for everything. He, he was helping me out. He helped me find the last one, so that was fun. Um, and then, yeah, limited fall missions available. So it looks like there's more stuff. Um, I haven't really dived into that. I just did that real quickly. I haven't really had time to play much. You know, really the biggest thing for me, and this is speaking to me, like, I love that they're doing this. So they made an adjustment to the Double Zeta Gundam in Gundam Battle Operation and added the uh, Fortress, let's see, what is it called? Uh, there's there's a name for it. The, oh, they're just saying the Flighting Form, but I know there's like a name for the, the Flying Fortress or whatever it's called. Now, we, you know, in the Double Zeta uh, show and, and how it's explained, there's multiple components to it being in its flight mode and so i think this is a certain component that requires just the one cockpit you know i'm not too sure i want to look into that a little bit more i did that deep dive on the mobile suit in a previous podcast where 
I was talking about where some people or some pilots will have to fly in pieces for it and then just take off. That's just another element <clears throat> I like about mobile suits when they can transform into a, a flying mode. So I haven't had to check it out yet, but I, I'm glad they've added that in because just as a fan of the Double Zeta Gundam and its flight mode, uh, and you know what I'm playing, I play a lot as the Rigazi Custom, and that one has a flight mode. And really, because as soon as a match starts, if it's you know capturing points, I will go into flight mode immediately and just go to the furthest point that's still close to my team uh, to go ahead and get that ready and captured and and it's also good if i need to respawn and then quickly go support a teammate or something so i i like having flight mode available um let's see pressing the touchpad transforms it into a uh, flight form that can actually my uh, old man eyes are calling so i'm going to um magnify my viewing okay pressing the touchpad transforms it into a flight form that consumes the thrusters when transform the MS's performance skills and available weapons change uh, from normal. Change from normal, yeah. Pressing the crouch button will slow down the flight speed and increase the turning speed. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know I don't know if that's also with other flight modes. When the thrusters overheat, the transformation uh, state is released and the transformation cannot be performed again until the thruster uh, recovery. Yeah, that's kind of normal. Um but yeah, it looks great. <clears throat> So, let's see, it changed sub-weapon, double cannon, it has a high power but low firing power, and it fires at a standstill, but when it hits, it staggers. So, very interesting, it seems they've added a weapon, which is cool. Y you know, when I use the double Zeta a lot in GBO2 anyway, and I do fine with it, so it's cool that it's got that adjustment made to it. Um, it looks like it has some other adjustments they've made in general. Um, let's see. Shorten the enhancement time by using 14 tickets. Okay, I don't use that too much. Um, spectator mode. Camera work for special skills. So just some really cool updates. It's really cool to see this game continue to make updates. Now this picture's unfortunate. Uh, very odd looking there, but hey, whatever floats their boat. Uh, but it's funny because it's, you know, Halloween time. I would ass I would guess this is the Halloween episode, although I don't really have anything prepared. I do have an idea for a Halloween video. So maybe I'll get that done before then. <clears throat> but anyway, in uh, preparation for Code Fairy launching the Halloween um, theme this year is around Code Fairy. That's why they have those fairy stamps to get. Uh, let's see. Prepare to be KIA. So, Nero Trainer, I guess this is from Moon Gundam, uh, is a new mobile suit to get. And then I guess for those that don't have the double Zeta, it might be easier to grab it now. And three chances, special step up with super bonus. Get a super bonus 11th item with a 10 consecutive supply drop. So, yeah, some cool mobile suits in here. The Faz is always cool. Premium login bonus update. Um, yeah, is that the O? I'd like to get that. So anyway, I just love how this game continues to get updates. I mean, that's awesome. So if anyone out there is not playing GPO 2 and you have a PlayStation, I would say check it out. Hit me up on Discord if you want. I, I played with some members, and I, I'm down to, to play anytime anyone wants to play. Um... Uh, I guess, yeah, post in the Discord. I'm usually... Nah, it depends when I'm available, but we can work something out. <clears throat> All right. Um, next item. I want to get into some news. So, oh, a surprise for me, because I love Robot Spirits. So, on the Premium Bandai website, they have this... The ground type, which is already a, a mobile suit available for pre-order, but this is the desert type. Uh, there's some differences to it, actually. There's more differences than just it being a desert type. But I think it's awesome. So that gives us, like, three suits within a short amount of time. Ah, but just think May 2022. Uh, but, uh, yeah, three mobile suits then um, in a short time frame from uh, 08 MS team. So uh, we have the regular ground type, this desert type, and then that... J type Zaku too. 
I think that's what it was. I forgot. So uh, that's really cool. It's just interesting that I had to go to different websites to pre-order and not everything is on Premium Bandai. Don't know why that is exactly. And sometimes I get scared because something will be sold out somewhere. And I'm like, well, I didn't know where to pre-order that. But that is usually a play. You know, Big Bad Toy Store gets them, but they're usually priced quite a bit because... Let's see. Well, there was a recent, just recently I pre-ordered, I think it was one of the Zakus, that um, it was about 70 plus shipping. It made about 90 uh, because of shipping from Japan, but Big Bad had it for 130 So as much as I like shopping at Big Bad Toy Store, the prices of the Gundam stuff can be quite high. And anyway, just checking out what else was on Premium Bandai. They have the... Uh, Jagan from F91, which is really cool, and they actually have three types that you can get. And it's cool. The Gunpla is only $23. It's so cheap. I mean, yeah, you have to build it, preferably paint it, detail it if you really want it to look like a robot spirits. But, I mean, that's fun anyway. And then as I was looking down, they have these cool Mafti from Hathaway uh, accessories here. Nothing that I would really grab. <clears throat> there's a cool a few cool things like this AU jacket uh, and then uh, I guess for Halloween this looks good this uh, Cuble damned I love the uh, the hands on it it just makes it even more freakier than it is if you think about I mean if you see something like that coming at you that's pretty scary all right uh, you know something else that came up was this, okay, Yoshikazu Yasuhiko draws striking key visual for Gundam The Origin Exhibition. So, advanced tickets go on sale today. That was two days ago. So, I guess there is this exhibition going on for Mobile Suit Gundam The uh, Origin. And what they've done was, you know, there's some key art that looks cool. I love the artwork of this, by the way. And I even love this. So, uh, can I X this? No, I can't. Um, but what's cool about this is they're releasing high grades of, I really think they're ones that we already have, you know, the RX-78-2 origin version, uh, and the uh, Shars custom Zaku-2. But what's cool about these, and I don't know if there's any other main differences, but we can see here, like, if you look at the shield, it has that art that's on it. And while that's not something I'm going to jump at immediately, I like that. I, I think it looks great. It's like a very specific piece. It's it's really to celebrate the origin manga. Um, you know, I really like the, the origin series. I hope they expand on that even more. But the manga itself is really cool. That That's just some awesome artwork. So <clears throat> now I didn't see this on the P Bandai site. So, you know, as I'm learning that as things get released... Let's see, uh, the with the plastic one, okay, so I guess if you're going to the exhibit or the exhibition, that's how you get these model kits, but I just don't know if there's any other way you can get them. We might see a release later. You know, why not? Because um, I think it's just reuse anyway, right? Okay. Let's see, yeah, let me exit. Yeah, and this kind of popped up. You know, I'm not familiar with a persons of cultural merit, but this is apparently a big deal, you know, mainly out of Japan. So Gundam creator Yoshi Yuki Tomino, manga creator Yumiko Oshima, honored as persons of cultural merit. Now, I think there was a whole lot of others, but this was just like an honor given to, to Tomino just for the work he's done with Mobile Suit Gundam, and it makes sense because... It was such a, from what I've researched, a big turning point uh, in Japan for, you know, film and anime. Although I don't know that, you know, I don't really know the significance as much. Ooh, so Shigegaki Segusa received the award in 2020. That's cool because love, I love the music. And I, I think I brought him up on that uh, video about the openings when I was talking about the music. Uh, from Gundam that I really like. So, yeah, anyway, just something cool to to bring up when this guy gets his uh, gets his due. So, 
All right. So here's this other one I want to bring up, you know, just kind of helping a fellow creator here. Um, this is Studio Cero, and th they released their first video of a uh, Gundam build. I'm going to make sure that is coming in right now. Um, let's see. Let me get back to that. So what's cool about this is this is the Earth 3, and I actually, I actually built one of these way back. Now, let's, you guys might be familiar with it and the kind of style where you're kind of clipping and cutting, but it goes on beyond that. Not only do we have some text, you know, commentary uh, of his stuff, but he's doing some extra scribing in there um, uh, using uh, airbrushing, which is awesome, but the, oh, panel lining, but the end result looks sick. Like, it has that new Gundam kind of aesthetic in terms of coloring on top of the, yeah, the Earth 3 Gundam, which looks great. Yeah, if you guys want to go check out Studio Cero, um, maybe give him some motivation to uh, keep up his work. Let's see. Uh, he had one video, yeah, of the time. Yeah, but I found him. But, yeah, very cool. Very cool stuff. Uh, I think it was, yeah, really well done looking uh I could see this would be a promising uh, Gundam channel for the future. I got to say, for one thing, when it comes to Gumpla, like, not only is there a lot of work making <laughs> the Gumpla, but also the editing, the filming of all the different aspects and then editing it together. But being at such high quality as we're seeing the end result here. So, so kudos, man. Looks really good. All right, so... Mobile suit of the week. And that's going to go to the MRX-010 Psycho Gundam Mark II. Now, why did I decide to go with this? Well, yeah, it's Halloween. Look at how spooky that Gundam face looks. I mean, really. And the size of the thing. You know what's even scary when you're watching Double Zeta and it's coming at you in its flight form. Let's see if there's a, uh, I think, probably over here. Yeah, look at that. Mobile Fortress mode. I mean, it looks just like the, the other Psycho Gundam, but that had that nice, cute Gundam head that we're familiar with, but this kind of takes it to the next level and makes it a little uh, a little scary. So, yeah, let's jump into this. The MRX-010 Psycho Gundam Mark II, a.k.a. Psycho Gundam Mark II, is a transformable mobile uh, armor that appears in Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam and its sequel, Mobile Suit Gundam Double Zeta. It was originally piloted by Titans Rosamia Badam and subsequently by Neo Zeon's Pluto 2. Technology and combat characteristics an improvement over the original MRX 009 Psycho Gundam. The MRX 010 Psycho Gundam Mark II was also equipped with a Psychomu and Psycho control system to allow its new type or cyber new type pilot to control this massive mobile weapon with mere thoughts. It also inherited its predecessor's ability to transform into a mobile fortress mode, as well as the Minofsky craft system for atmospheric flight. The Psycho Gundam Mark II was, however, more energy efficient and more deadly. It has a greater amount of weapons that have higher power ratings, despite having a fusion reactor that only produces a little over half of what the Psycho Gundam was capable. And that, that makes me think it would be really cool to see the Psycho Gundam, either the one or the Mark II, against the Penelope. Uh, you know, that that would actually be a cool-looking uh, battle. Like the Psycho Gundam, the Psycho Gundam Mark II was armed with three scattering mega beam cannons in its body, finger-mounted beam cannons, and head-mounted small mega beam cannons. In addition, it was also armed with 20 mega beam cannons all over its body, capable of attacking targets in all directions. Its forearms were also equipped with wired Psychomu beam swords, which were wire-guided and could be controlled through the unit's Psychomu system, making it equally dangerous in close combat. The Psycho Gundam Mark II also carried a set of reflector bits, which were unarmed but were used to redirect its own beam weapons to fire targets that are out of sight or to deflect and redirect incoming enemy beam weapons fire. Like the MSN-02 Zeong, the Psycho Gundam Mark II also featured a detachable head unit, which could be operated independently in case its main body unit was destroyed. So armaments, small uh, mega beam cannon, two small mega beam cannons are mounted in the forehead and can be even used when the head functions as an escape pod. Uh, 
Mega Beam Cannon. 20 Mega Beam Cannons are mounted all over the Psycho Gundam Mark II's body, and they have a power rating of 6.3 MW each. There are three guns mounted in each shoulder, four mounted in each leg, two mounted in each side skirt armor, and one mounted in each front skirt armor. Scattering Mega Beam Cannon. Like the original Psycho Gundam, the Psycho Gundam Mark II also has three scattering Mega Beam Cannons in the abdomen. These scattering Mega Beam Cannon... These scattering Mega Beam Cannons have power ratings of 10.7 megawatts. Wait, yeah, MW. What was that MW again? I always... This, I don't think that's going to help. Like, if I did, like, 3.7 megawatt. 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 Okay. So, 10.7 megawatt each. They can blind the enemies and even tear through enemy units in one shot. Wired Saikamu Beam Sword. Not only can the forearms detach and be directed at a target via a cable connection, they can also emit a large beam sword, each allowing an all-range melee attack power rating of 1.7 megawatts each. The detached Form is controlled via the Psycho Gundam Mark II Psychomic system. Makes sense. Beam Cannon. The fingers of the Psycho Gundam Mark II each contain a beam cannon for a total of 10 beam cannons. Reflector Bit. The Psycho Gundam Mark II can carry a number of special reflector bits in his backpack. And like the bits developed by Xeon, these were not equipped with a beam emitter. Instead, they were used to redirect uh, Psycho Gundam Mark II's beams to create all range attacks and to hit targets that are out of sight. They can also be used defensively to redirect enemy fire. So that's cool. It almost sounds like funnels in a way, but like a predecessor to that. Shield, as with its predecessor, Psycho Gundam Mark II is capable of using a shield with similar functions, including the ability to split in half and be mounted on the lower sides in mobile fortress mode. All right, so yeah, the special equipment and features, so detachable head. The Psycho Gunner Mark II's cockpit is located in its head, much like the Xeong's, the Xeon's Xeong. Say that 10 times fast. Similarly, the head could detach and be operated independently of the body to be used as an escape pod. Saikamu system. The Saikamu is a device connected directly to the user's thoughts, through which the user can manipulate it by using his or her mind. In essence, a Saikamu system works by passively scanning the brainwaves of new types amplifying them in order to send the brainwave signal out long distances and then translating these brainwaves into raw machine codes upon being received by the selected object with limitations. Since brainwaves are not affected by the radio interference property of the Monofsky particles, at first it was mainly used to mentally control remote weapons via Monofsky communication, usually mounted with a single beam gun. This enabled the resurrection of BVR engagements with bits and funnels being the first weapons able to engage targets without visual contact since the development of the Minofsky particle. Very cool. I love how the Minofsky particle is a thing. It, it, it makes sense and it makes the combat make sense. All right, Psycho Control System. First installed in the second unit of the Psycho Gundam, this system allows the pilot to control the unit externally via the Saikamu system. That's right. And, you know, just real quick, um, no judging, but uh, this is a pumpkin spice hard seltzer. Hey, it's that time of year. This is the spooky episode, right? All right, history. Despite the destruction of the MRX-009 Psycho Gundam, the Mirasame New Type Lab continued its research and created the even more powerful MRX-010 or 010 Psycho Gundam Mark II. Piloted by the powerful yet Unstable cyber new type Razami Abadam, and combined with all of its new weapons and Saikamu based technology, the Psycho Gundam Mark II was a much deadlier foe for MSZ 006 Zeta Gundam and his pilot Camille Badan. That's something that bothered me. It was Razami Abadam, Camille Badan. It was very similar, but hey, why not? Uh, Camille Badan, then the original Psycho Gundam. Camille managed to critically damage the Mark II during a battle of the at the Gate of Zidon during the last stage of the Grips conflict, killing its pilot in the process. Almost a year later, in UC-0088, Neozeon forces retrieved the wreckage of the Psycho Gundam Mark II and rebuilt it. During its transportation, it was briefly activated by the nearby presence of new type El Peo Play. It was then piloted by their own cyber new type pilot, Player 2. In their war against the AU, however, after a lengthy battle in the aftermath of the Dublin colony drop, it was finally destroyed by the MSZ-010 
Double Zeta Gundam. So very interesting that both of these, the Double Zeta Gundam and this Psycho Gundam Mark II had this 010 uh, part. I don't know if there's any meaning behind that or if they, yeah, I don't know. If anyone knows that, let me know. But Pedro 2 survived by using the detachable head unit to escape. Um, very cool. And, you know, just again, it, I love this look. It has kind of that spooky look. And it's very similar to what we see in uh, Hathaway's Flash. What is it? Not the uh, Penelope, but the other one. Adam, you, you have forgotten. That's too many different mobile suits in a day that I'm trying to remember. Um... Did, yeah, and, and it kind of takes that Zeta, that angular look, but I love it. It looks demonic. It looks evil. And that's why I thought it would be good to use. Oh, let's look at that real quick. So this is maybe the little bits it's talking about. You know what I love doing whenever I do a deep dive into a mobile suit and then I go watch, uh, watch it. Now that looks sick. So it's like a zombie mode. Now this is perfect <laughs> for this episode. Look at that. That, that looks sick. And I've, there's not a Robot Spirits. There is a model kit, and actually Big Bad Toy Store has a pre-order for one that's coming out maybe this month or next month. But there's a... I forget what the brand is. It's the... Or not the brand, but... What do they call that? The, not the not the Metal Robot Spirits. It's the um, Fixed Figuration, I think. And it's still a big boy. So I might uh, grab that. It's just the price. But yeah, that thing looks great. Let's see if there's any cool... Uh... Oh yeah, the action figures. Here we go. Gundam Fix Figuration Metal Composite. You know, that, that looks cool. It, it's losing some of its angular body structure. But maybe it's allowed to transform. But I just love the fixed figuration real tight markings. Okay, and here is... Let's see... This is Metal Composite. Um, let's see. It's okay. Yeah, it looks awesome. And, and the scale, too. I saw someone with their uh, that YouTube video kind of showing the scale. And it looks great. Yeah, check that out real quick. Just I can't get that. To, yeah, there we go. Yeah, transformation, everything. So very cool. Very cool. No, uh, oh yeah, notes and trivia. Psycho Gundam Mark II appears as a unit in the Gundam uh, Verse series, debuting as an unlockable play, uh, playable unit in Gundam vs. Zeta Gundam. The unit can be uh, uniquely unlocked by purchasing an item from the gallery menu called Mode. I don't really need to get into that, but I guess it's really about you can use it in a game. Um, it reappears again in Gundam Extreme Verse, but it's shared by its two known pilots. Okay. Well, very cool. So I guess if you want to play it in a game, there's that. Well, cool then. Let's uh let's head on over to comments. So from podcast episode 14, I hope I started this by saying this is episode 15. I don't remember exactly, but from Santo Bell, Code Fairy, somewhat separate GBO game with shared saves and kickbacks for completing missions and tasks. November 5th, looking forward to it. Yeah, thanks for that extra information. Um so I think there's something about it's not like you're not really able to pre-order it yet in North America, although there's the page for it. And the pricing makes it seem like it would be super expensive here. So hopefully that's not the case. Um, oh, and some other things. Um, probably need a full capture device for PlayStation streaming. Yeah, for the Genesis game or some games that actually do the where oh we can't share this, we can't stream this, or record this, whatever. Yeah, that's definitely a screw up on Sony's part in some way. The new Gundam S4 phone looks awesome if you're uh, after Gundam swag or merch. And yeah, typically I am. It, but I've tried to get out of uh, just buying phones. I used to upgrade my phone all the time. Uh, uh, Thunderbolt is the official UC timeline. Manga and novels explain the suits and how and why they exist. Yeah, you know, I came across that a little more this week when I was trying to get people's thoughts on Thunderbolt because that's the thing about going online and talking about Gundam. You'll hear things that are not entirely accurate, like perception of Zeta Gundam, for, or double Zeta, I'm sorry. 
Or, yeah, even the ending of Zeta going into double Zeta. For some reason, there's this perception that it doesn't work, but it does. And Camille has a perfect resolution to a story at the end of double Zeta. But anyway, the other part was Thunderbolt, where people would say, yeah, Thunderbolt is kind of not in canon. It's just like a what if. And from what I understand, no, uh, Thunderbolt is official part of the canon. Justice. It was the justice. That must have been something I, I said, Robert. Thanks. Record old school style. Record old school style. Yeah. Instead of the streaming stuff. All right. Robert Rochewa, uh Halloween Jack-O-Lantern Kapool. Yeah. And the Kapool is another uh, one in GBO2 to grab. That would be a good good one to get. Momo Kapool from Bill Divers has the mini Haro Kapool pilot module in the center. It's supposed to be a penguin, but it makes a great jack-o'-lantern. Uh, yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, thanks, guys. Oh, Robert, 460 subs. Yeah, the subs went up. I'm almost, almost, I can always say I'm almost at 500, but um, 600 is when I'll do the giveaway. For sure. All right, Will Reed. SD Genesis is a weird one on my PS4. It's constantly giving me a notification that any type of recording, streaming, sharing, etc. is not allowed. Strange, but I have noticed that this game isn't very streaming friendly, which is pretty weird as it's a fun little game. Another great podcast. Congrats on the 460 followers. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, that's very strange because um, you want your game to be streamable in order to market itself to people. So while I think that that game's time has gone I think right now they're focusing on the Super Robot Wars 30. So, And I, I got it on PC anyway. So, yeah, I'll be streaming that probably. I'd love to. Matt Ralph. Xeonic Front is a PS2 game that did release in the U.S. It's squad-based game closer to old school Rainbow Six. You pilot things like Zakus and Goofs. So how you use your team and when and where you attack are important because you're not in a Gundam. I highly recommend if you've got a PS2 and like ground suits with more ground combat replaying it myself currently so that's cool that sounds very tactical and let me ask you if that's similar to that side story uh, on dreamcast because when i didn't know what gundam was back in when that came out in 99 or 2000 i bought it just because i like gundam game i mean i'm sorry i liked dreamcast and i liked robot mech games so i played it and it was definitely a ton of fun. It's funny to think back that that was a Gundam game. I played through that whole thing. I think I even beat it, and there was not much to do anymore, so I deleted my save and just did it again. I did that a lot with, like, uh, Soul Calibur. I would unlock everything, delete my save, and just do it again. Nowadays, I rarely play through a game again, or even beat a game. But yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for that. I, mean, I am going to have to check that out. I have a few emulators set up to play some games. So there's that, yeah, Battlefield Record 0081, I think it's called. And yeah, there's like this little animation they've released. And I want to cover that here on the channel. But I do want to play that because that is, I am curious what happened during 81, 82, even some of 80. Even though there's War in the Pocket, that's like right at the beginning of 0080. But I'm curious what all happened in 81 and 82 before uh, yeah, Stardust in 83. And then... There's even some things that could have happened before the lead up to, and that might be advance of Zeta. Now that I think about it, that goes right before Zeta. So, all right, Robert Westfall, also crazy anime, but check out Duel Parallel Trouble Adventure, and don't forget Maple's Machine God mode from the MMORPG anime known as Bo Fury. Bo Fury. Um, never heard of that. I am gonna have to check that out. Well, Reed, very cool setup with the angles here. I would love to see. Oh, yeah, that's right. So that was one of my, um, when I was kind of doing some pictures, I don't do as much as I used to. And I really want to get back into it, like the photography of my Gundams and and even the, the action figures they had. Yeah, check out this uh, link for anyone that, yeah, check out this short I made, Xeon Soldiers Hiding from Federation Mobile Suits. And I have the link of my Instagram where I have the final product uh, posted up there, so. All right, and then, yes, someone in Japanese saying something nice. So I replied, Arigato gozaimasu. You know, interesting, I took, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, I did take Japanese in high school, so it's kind of weird that it's been in me, this interest. But uh, it just seemed interesting to me because I love video games and import stuff. So I took Japanese class, and I liked it. I learned a few things. Rob the Builder, woo, first, for action figures, I tend to prefer... 
uh, the more plain look, less things that could get messed up in the mold and prep stage, but the seams on the upper arms would drive me nuts until I fixed it, LOL. Yeah, that's the thing. With Luckily, with Gunpla, it's easy to fix those seams wherever you want. With action figures that are pre-built, it really depends on what is required, but there's some things that I've been able to do. Uh, some robot spirits that are lower in price or have duplicates of, I will panel line, put decals on them. And when I panel line, I do light panel lining anyway. So, so yeah, thanks for that. The Dahmer. Yeah, I really like that in the, the little logo there. That's cool. Waiting for the eventual ver anime of this and the Sazabi. Yeah, so excellent point. The Sazabi and the new Gundam could get a ver anime version in the Robot Spirits line that would look potentially better uh, than the ones they have, even though they're fine, and then have the effect part uh, compatibility um, and even the effect part, um, you could even, oh yeah, I even put that a psycho wave effect part because the psycho wave is such a big deal. Yeah, that would be cool if they had a very anime new Gundam that came with probably a hand and, uh, Char's escape pod from the Sazabi that you can hold on to. And then maybe like a little psycho wave thing going around. It's like kind of translucent, but with all the different colors and yeah. All right, from Zendito Sedawan. Woo, ah, thank you so much, Adam. Um, and, and so, yeah, anytime, whatever I did, I th I want to say maybe, Zendito, you might have asked for me to review that. Um, yeah, so yeah, just like with someone in the Gundam After War X, just, yeah, advise me of what you want to see. That kind of helps me quickly get to what I can review and of thinking about it. Wow, silver place on the likes. And this is from Robert. Got to hand it to you, Adam. This is a true bare bones new Gundam. By the way, what did Bright Noah tell Amra before the Axis battle? I see you got a new Gundam, my good man. <laughs> That's a good one. I like the Gundam dad jokes. Uh, let's see. How much would it cost? Oh, to send something. Yeah, not sure about the cost because, well, like when I was sending something to someone overseas. I looked up the the cost, and then when I went, it was completely different. So, yeah, it's always hard to tell. Woodpecker fourteen twelve. The animation uh, movie is like it looks like a Hollywood movie. Yeah, that's the thing with Mobile Suit Gundam Hathaway. The presentation of the anime really makes it look like a Hollywood film, and that's the strange thing: uh, Japan versus here in the United States, where cartoons are really relegated to child or family films whereas a lot of the Gundam stuff is very adult oriented and typically wouldn't have a kid want to watch Hathaway and a kid probably would get bored of it because there's not much of the mobile suit battles and even as much as I love just watching mobile suit battles I love it when they can dive more into the world building of characters that we've come to know so uh, let's see from B Bear Gaming I like watching reviews for Robot Spirits even though I'm more of a Gunpla person myself yeah, that's very cool. I'm glad to know that so I can continue to do that. And even I watch Gunpla reviews of, even though I don't buy Gunpla as much as I used to. I also watch other action figure reviews. I, I haven't really been buying other action figures. I used to like doing that and I've kind of slowed down like really all the way. <laughs> but I like to see what's out there. And it just reminds me when I was a kid, the action figures I liked or wanted versus what's out now. So... Yeah, you know, the other day, I actually have it right here, um, or I did. I think my son grabbed it, but um, he's into into the Spider-Verse, so he's got a few of those Marvel Legends, so, um, yeah, that's, that's been cool. Um, oh, uh, I think he heard what I was saying. He wanted to show his favorite. It's uh, the Miles Morales. Um, there was a couple chores or things that he needed to do and i told him hey, i'll get i'll get this for you once you do this stuff and he kept getting stuff done and i was like all right i guess i gotta get it for you so yeah that stuff's cool and i have some cool spider actually yeah one right here because i was trying to play with him earlier it's sad as an adult it's so hard to play with action figures um but anyway this is the band this is bandai just like most robot spirits but this is their um sh figure arts PS4 Spider-Man. I love the look of the suit, and I think the game is a ton of fun. Um, 
Oh, and I have the Japanese Spider-Man. Uh, he's up on my shelf. I don't want to grab him right now, but they have, you know, from the Japanese show of Spider-Man. Uh, I got the action figure of that. I love it. Um, let's see. I love the whole, uh, oh, this is from Kenny Allen. I love the whole figuring of the RX-93 uh, New Gundam. I mean, I got the Universal Unit uh, volume for New Gundam. I got the Master Grade of Verka. Okay, so yeah, the, they have the Universal Unit. Yeah, I remember that was, a. Uh, aren't they the smaller sized ones? Master Grade Verka, that's awesome. Real Grade. I love everything about Amaro Ray. Um, his last Gundam. Yeah, the new Gundam is a very awesome look. Um, and I, hey, if you like everything about Amaro Ray's Gundams, you should check out the High New Gundam. And I even have a video of that. But there's a lot of cool High New Gundam um, action figures and model kits you can get right now. Oh, Studio Sierra, that's right. Uh, cool review. Does Robot Spirits feel different compared to a Gumpla kit? Yeah, and I kind of explained how, you know, they feel different because it's a lot more sturdy. You can really, I was about to say, play with it. <laughs> it's what we all secretly do. But, you know, articulate it however you want. You don't have to worry about it falling apart. And sometimes it has a nice finish, depending on what the figure is. That really makes it feel like a high-quality uh, robot uh, or Gumpla. You know, the thing is, when it comes to articulation, too, it's usually all very smooth, and you don't have to worry about it falling apart or getting it just right. You know, they're different things. I went through a Gumpla phase, so I appreciate building. I never got as far as airbrushing other than um, spray cans in the backyard, uh, but I really wanted to airbrush to kind of do finer details and stuff. I never really got that far, but I plan to. All right. Um, Mobile Suit Gundam Hathaway. Uh, so there's some Japanese, I forget what um, this was. Yes, I, I think I had to do a translation on that. But I love that I get a lot of Japanese followers just because I feel like if anyone's going to critique my work, it's going to be the homeland of Gundam. But um, I'll even, uh, I got to remember, I did it in my last video, but change, uh, I'll add Japanese subtitles. Um, because my viewership, it used to be more uh, Japan and now U.S. has overtaken that. But what you could do is when you look at your subtitles in YouTube, there's an option to download the subtitles that automatically creates. I then upload English subtitles and I just upload that file. And then with that file uploaded, you can do an option to translate. And so I'll translate to Japanese. So If there's any other language that is very common for if someone's on here from uh, you know, an area where they speak a, or read a certain language better than it is to listen to me speak English. Let me know. I'd be happy to put uh, subtitles. Well, read. I love Stardust Memory. The pronunciation of names and mobile suits in this dub is what I've always gone by, referring to the gym as GM instead of gem. Also, Chuck Keith and Maura Bosch beat UC Cup. Best UC couple. Uh, what are some of your favorite couples of Gundam? So, yeah, a couple things here. That is weird about the Jim GM thing because I see a lot in YouTube videos people refer to them as Jims, but in Stardust Memory, which is an amazing Gundam property, they say GM, and that's how I would originally see it when I would read it. I would say GM. Um, so yeah, for me, my favorite couple it's Camille and Fa because I like Fa because she's. Pretty strong. She's always standing by Camille, even what he goes through at the end of Zeta and through Double Zeta. And then she even fights in Double Zeta. And then by the end of Double Zeta, they are back together. He is back to normal, and they are happy together on the beach. And that's like a happy ending. And that makes me just appreciate that whole relationship. Whereas a lot of characters, we don't get to see their full relationships or someone passes away. Um, you know, even with Amuro, we don't really get to see his relationships play out as much. Um so yeah, let's see. We got this from CLX W N C R X W N. Can't pronounce that. Sorry. Watching the colony gassing done by Xeon and Gundam Origins was soul wrenching. Watching the citizens die was traumatic, but in in a sense was a blessing in disguise as the colony being dropped into the atmosphere of Earth uh, would have caused mass panic among the population. And if any actually survived the after effects of the colony drop, imagine the PTSD. Christ, I'm not. Excusing Zion's actions, but it's better to die unaware than to see the face of death. Zion's actions were cowardly. Yeah. 
That's pretty crazy. I think even Seema, who's a main Xeon enemy from the Xeon Remnants in this, she was part of the team that I think had to gas, and she even was feeling some remorse about that, which was pretty interesting. But that's a cool part of, of Origin, except for that one guy that wanted to hang out outside the, the doors that were getting gassed, and so he kind of saw what was going on. I think he started getting really cold. That was an excellent scene from Origin. Um, that deserves its own video, actually. So, yeah, thanks, uh, CLX, WN, CRX, WN. That's got to be something. It's got to be something. Matt Ralph, double 83 and 08 MS team have a special place in my heart since they got me into UC Gundam. Double zero eighty three has some Top Gun vibes that I've always enjoyed, and GPO one and GPO one FB are awesome suits. Yeah, very true. And, and sometimes I'll say bad things about always MS team, but at the end of the day, like, yeah, I can get where something like that and Stardust Memories are a great way to get people in the gun because these are good and they're good, great animations that don't have this like over the top dramatic sort of. Um, character situations that that we get in and it's not really in a lot of Gundam but it's what what's happening is you're getting used to these characters and they're expanding on them and I think Unicorn is the best example of how overly dramatic Gundam can get if you're not used to it so watching something like oh with the MS team and double zero eighty three definitely the best way to get into it especially grunt suits and all that stuff all right Robert uh, some more commentary fifth place I don't think it really matters what could he be speaking about? I want to see this all the way through. Oh, about 0083. Yeah, totally worth it. Uh, that, yeah, it was so fun doing that video. I, I tell you, it, it, I can't wait to keep going, especially how it ended that first episode. That sick music. The guy just pulling out. His, it just looked like a samurai pulling out his sword. Yeah. A big and buffy lady. Nice. Oh, so a fan of Mora as well, Robert Westfall. Give me motto. Hmm. Rain, would love to see you watch After War Gundam X sometime. Such an underrated show. And if I remember correctly, you never got to see it before. Would make for an awesome reaction series. You know what? I think I'm going to do that. I watched a little thing I was saying on YouTube that looked really cool. Definitely need to do that. And I want to cover all Gundam. I do. All right, Kyle Yen, as someone who has only watched Double O and part of IBO, this full grunt battle has me captivated. Oh, yeah, from Unicorn. So, Kyle, eh, even though that battle is cool, I wouldn't, if you haven't watched any UC, I wouldn't go with Unicorn. I would go, maybe Double O 83, you know, with the MS team is a good way to be introduced to UC, but then really start with Mobile Suit Gun. I'm start with the original. Get to understand the characters and the motivations that are the driving factor between the the groups that are starting these wars um, within the UC timeline. So, so yeah, well, there we go. That was episode 15 of the Gunnam Explained podcast. Thanks for tuning in, watching, whatever. If there's anything that uh, I should be covering some more, just let me know. Please join the Discord if you haven't. Check out the video in the description uh, for the giveaway that I'm doing. There's, yeah, two items I'm going to be giving away here soon once I hit about 600. And I'm coming up to 500, so that's going to be soon. Yeah, anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk next time.